Let us continue in prayer. Praise to you, living God. The heavens declare your glory. The wonder and complexity of nature speak of your power and mind. Who could conceive such complexity? Who could bring such things into being? In time you called us, your people, through Abraham and Moses, through the prophets and through Christ, to live your way, to be an expression of praise. We give thanks for the good that is done in your name, those who love the poor, who stand against injustice, who work against oppression, who strive for equity. Yet yeah, God, we acknowledge with sorrow and lament 
that sometimes your church, your people, are not vehicles of praise. The workings of the church sometimes cause people to curse you or to question your existence. When we fail to live or fail to love in the way that you have shown us, have mercy on us and forgive us in your grace. When we smother or shield the light that you have placed within us, tear open our heartstrings, the cages of our minds, that your light may shine from us once again. All praise to you, living God. And may that praise be lived in our life together, your people, the church, now and always. Amen. Nothing we do stops God's light. Nothing we do stops God's love. When we come to God, God is waiting to bring us back into his way. When we confess our sins, we know that they are forgiven in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Cooking with John. I need a cook. I have an apron. Don't everyone rush at once. Just one, two. Oh, just make sure they're appropriate. Oh, thanks, Catherine. I'll give you the nicest. Can anyone guess what we're cooking this morning? Bread. Yes. We're cooking the basics of bread. The most simplest of bread, which is? No, that's not bread, that's flour. The simplest bread that our early settlers used. Damper. Because we're Australian. Um, There we go, we have a recipe. Catherine, I will read it to you if you can't read it yourself. It is a bit small. It is behind us too. All right, we need three cups of self-raising flour. Can you validate that I've measured that correctly? Yes. Yes. We need a pinch of salt. I think we've got that. Um, 80 grams of butter cubed. That's one of those little pieces because we're doing this twice this morning. And 185 or three quarters of a cup of water. Yes. Combine the flour and salt in a large bowl. Yes, yes.
I'm now going to use Reese Mine. Yeah. Apparently, in a cutting motion to the mixture until the mixture comes together, adding one or two tablespoons of extra water if we need them. That's it. So today we're thinking about that Jesus said he is the bread of life. Last week we shared communion. Have you ever thought, well, what does that actually mean? To be the bread of life. And then we're going to, about an 18 centimetre disc, I didn't bring in a measuring tape, but round of Thanks, Catherine. Give her a clap. <laughs> Cooking in church. <laughs> We're going to sing a song normally for communion, but eat this bread and drink this cup as we come to hear the story of Jesus talking about being the bread of life.
Lynn's bringing us our Bible reading. Sorry, Lynn, today the, the camera's not working, so can you read from here? Is that doable? Yeah. <laughs> it's a long one. Sorry. The Bible reading today is taken from John chapter 6, verses 29 to 59. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whomever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that the one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. In this we hear the word of God. Thanks be to God. 
Alright, today I need four volunteers to play soft quiz. Not hard quiz, this is soft quiz. And I'm not Tom Gleason, and the answers are in the Bibles, which are here, already marked for you. Dog somebody in if you're not coming out yourself. Oh, thanks, Rosemary. Somebody, else. oh, you pick someone, Rosemary, to come with you. A friend. Pick a friend. Vivian put her hand up. Alan's coming. Great. All right. All right. Grab a Bible, which is already marked for you. Maybe I can get this to work. Have I got lights on? Yeah. Oh. Soft squid. Soft squid because it is the competition, and but it's fairly easy because the answers are in the Bible. Our focus topic for the day is John six. I am the bread of life. Has everyone found that? It's down on the bottom right hand side of the mark page. Start there. Question one. Buzz in with your name. You get to help in the audience. You can grab a Bible if you like to. We're on page 867. If you want to join in and play along at home, you can do that as well. Question one. Who is Jesus? Yeah, but according to the passage, the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Question two. What happens to those who come to Jesus? It'll probably say something like those who come to Jesus. Have eternal life? Is that your answer? <laughs> They'll never go hungry. Yeah, let's go back to this one. I am the bread of life. There we go, let's go 35. That's on the other page, there we go. 35. Who said, I am the bread of life? Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Awesome. Of course, is Jesus speaking literally or figuratively? Metaphorically or practically? Question three. How do people come to Jesus? Yeah. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. Excellent. So we're up to 44. You can sort of get that we're tracking down through the passage. Question four. What would Jesus do for those who come to him? Raise them up on the last day. Of course, we've got to be wondering what is the last day? And raise them up from what? Or to where? Because if you think about it, we, we've sung that if you believe in Jesus, you shall never die. 
So is it raising us from death to life or raising to heaven? These are the questions that we wrestle with. Question five. What happens to those who believe? Those who believe in the Son of Man to live forever, have eternal life. Question six. Who is Jesus? Well, the last one was 47, so it's probably in the 50. Son of man, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. That was close. He's definitely the son of man as well. Question seven. What happens if we eat the living bread? Live forever. Live forever. Live forever. So we're being raised from living forever to eternal life. So it's living forever eternal life. See? There's this question that you have heard this passage probably many times in your life. You've probably heard many sermons on this, but I thought it'd be good to ask some questions. Question eight. What is the living bread? It came down from It goes now. Anyone from the audience want to chime in? Steal the point. Not that we're keeping points for the soft bit. Living bread. No. <laughs> Go for him. My flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. 51 was still in the 50. Question 9. What happens if we don't eat the living bread that came from them? Die. You have no life in you. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. No life. <coughs> He's saying this to a bunch of people who are clearly alive, not talking to death. Question 10, what happens if we do eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood? Rose me again. To well, has eternal life, yes, and will be raised them up on the last day. Question 11, we're getting towards the end. What is the flesh and blood of the Son of Man? Big question. Probably about 55 or something like that. Well, I think some people leave. True food. My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Pamela got it. 55. And question 12. What is the result of feeding on the flesh and blood of the Son? Remains in me, knowing them, and they will live forever. 
Just as the Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Question 13. What should we work for? Now we're going right the way back. Back to like 29. For food, which doesn't spoil, but gives eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, and yes, I just said, cool. Give them all a big hand. Yes, cool. Of course, the big question we've already asked already, what does this all mean? Because Jesus is clearly talking metaphorically. Because he's talking to people who are already alive and saying, unless you eat, you will have no life. And when he says, I am the bread of life, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. It clearly, it's not meaning that literally. It's not a call to Christian cannibalism. So what does it all mean? How do we unravel this passage? The people hurting it, hearing it, was going, whoa, this is like hard teaching, Jesus. And we sit here going, well, we know what that means, but we don't. Do we? Do we? Do we? Does it mean communion? Is this some liturgical call that we have to keep doing communion? If we don't do communion, you don't get to go to heaven. That's how some have interpreted it in the past. But I'm not thinking that's what it is. On hearing this, his disciples said, this is hard teaching. Who can accept it? And from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. What does it mean? Well, we have to believe in the Son of Man, and we've talked about that before, but it's a while ago. Can you remember what it means to believe? The German word Lieber. Close to trust, a bit more. Standard, standard Christian thing. You know, that's the big key word. Well, trust, so it's not trust, so it has to be one of the other ones. Not faith. Love. Liba is love. You have to love God. Unless you love Jesus. And what does it mean to eat his bread, which is his flesh, which is his body? Jesus was the incarnation, the flesh of God in human form. Human flesh, divine God. That's why Jesus can say, I and the Father are one. I am the one who came down from heaven. Of course, we know that heaven isn't up, but back then, the heavens were above the dome of the skies because the world was flat. God came down or God entered our reality and took on our flesh. Unless we live as Christ lived, we shall not have life within us. And his blood, blood is life. You can have flesh, but unless that blood is pumping and is full of life, it is dead. To eat, this is my interpretation and others might disagree, but to eat of the flesh 
of Christ is to take his being into our being. When we eat food, it becomes part of us, except for that bit which passes out, which is waste. But the purpose of eating food is that we might have life, and drinking drink is that we might have life. But the blood of Christ is the life, the will of God, and the flesh is the way of God, the will and way of God. And unless we live the will and way of God, we have no life. Which clearly doesn't mean that we're not alive, that we're dead. And it's not just that we're not getting into heaven, although that might be, which is hard teaching, except by the grace of God. But it means that as a church, or as Christians, we're not really living well if we're not living the love of God well. If church is all that we do is on a Sunday morning, We've missed the point. This isn't worship. Not in the words of God. Jesus never, and I've said it before, but I, you can contradict me if you can find it. But I've yet to find in the Bible where Jesus says, I want you to meet in an expensive, slightly out of date building and tell me how good I am every week. So this is the way to live, which is to do the will of my Father, which I have come down, and this is what I am teaching you. You have to eat this. You have to bring it into your being. It has to become part of you. You have to drink the life. And we now have actual scientific research from Professor Sonia Lubomirsky and things like that, who have worked out that actually if you want a good life, a happy life, that is one that is fulfilling, ultimately purposeful and full of meaning, strangely enough, serving other people, doing good to others is the key. You look after yourself, because Jesus said love yourself, but love others. So if we want to really live as a church, if we want to be really alive, and unless we do it, we will not have life. We will die. Just doing the rituals, just doing the routine, just keeping the habits, just coming here to get something for us is not what church is about. We can come and God does feed us. God does nurture us in spirit. But that is that we might be sent out to be the incarnation, the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So unless we take Christ into us and live Christ's life, then we're not the body of Christ. We have no life in us. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. What does it all mean? Well, we have to do it. Not just listen to it and go, that's nice words, Jesus. Well, that's hard. We have to live it. We're going to sing and remind ourselves for a third time what Jesus taught us. I am the bread of life. And I'm going to sing along because you may not know this song, which I found astounding because, you know, we sing it all the time in the the other church that I was in. Well, not in Taramara, at Gordon. We sang it back in the 90s, I think. Anyway, let us stand and sing I Am the Bread of Life. David's going to play it through once and then we'll sing it together.
am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger. Those who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me. Oh, there's a missing a verse. Unless the Father draws them, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up at the last day. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world and those who eat of this bread they shall live forever they shall live forever and I will raise them up and I will raise them up and I will raise the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink of His blood, and drink of His blood, you shall not have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will raise to take you in, to live your way, full of your will. Take us and use us as your people, that all that we offer, these gifts, our prayers and our life, will be used for the building of your kingdom. Amen. <laughs> Um, of course, today it's a reminder that our annual general meeting is next week. So next week, one service, 10 a.m. in the morning, 6.45 is still happening, followed by our, oh, sorry, the AGM is at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. service, sorry. And we will be electing our church council, hearing the budget, and celebrating all the stuff that's been shared in InFocus the life of our church and the ministry that's been taking place. Today is the big sing-along. Come along at 2pm, sing along, and remember there is afternoon tea afterwards. 
and the floral demonstration and practical workshop ending on the 24th of August. Continuing to support. Thank you, Roland. And we now bring before God our prayers for those known to us and for ourselves and for the people of our world and our community. And at the end, we have the opportunity to join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Eternal God, in Jesus you have called us to bring our prayers before you in faith. We pray, loving God, for those known to us to be in particular need of your healing touch and the peace that only you can give. Peace that comes from knowing your abiding presence in our lives, regardless of circumstances. We hold in our prayer before you now those known to us individually who are in need of healing, body, of mind, of spirit. We pray that they may know your gentle presence your comforting presence, your reassuring presence, and that you would bless them with courage and the assurance of your promises. We pray for those who grieve in their hearts for the loss of loved ones, and those known to us for whom the future of life itself is uncertain, or for whom the awareness of life is failing because of mental illness and dementia. Grant, we pray, that they and each of us may have faith sufficient for what the future holds. And in the silence now, let us each bring before God at this time those known to us individually to be in special need of healing, of body or of mind or of spirit. Bless, we pray, loving God, those for whom we have concerns and feelings for, and concerns about health of whatever kind. Today, in line with the ecumenical prayer cycle, we remember and pray for the peoples of Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Niger, and Mauritania, countries in Central and West Africa. Jesus, light of the world, shine where there is darkness today in this troubled world, where there is hatred, division and bitterness, where there is pain and sorrow, where there is war and threat of war. Lord Jesus Christ, Light of the world, shine on our troubled world, we pray. Illuminate its darkness. At this time, we pray for all in our St. Matthew's community. We pray for John, for all those who assist in leadership of the community or groups within the community, and for all who support them daily. We pray that we may each experience the assurance of your presence with us day by day. Remind us, we pray, amid the pressures of our daily lives, of the one who came to be among us and who walks with us along life's way, so that we, who are people of faith, not sight, might discover hope where there has been doubt, comfort, where there has been despair, peace, where there has been anxiety and discord, and possibilities where there has been disappointment, warmth and companionship where there has only been isolation and aloneness. 
Remind us, eternal God, in those moments of uncertainty, aloneness and disappointment, that while we do not know what lies in the future, we know and can trust the one who holds that future. And these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life who came down from heaven the love of God incarnate in human form. Let us sing of God's love as we sing love divine or love to self.
to be the people of God, the body of Christ for others. May God bless us now in spirit and in truth, now and always. Amen. And if you want some damper, it's out there. <laughs> <laughs>